Nice! Uh, um, you had an explosion. I had an accident. Hey, welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. Speaking of dreams, I had a dream last night. I dreamed that we beat Bainville by three touchdowns. But I woke up a little sad. Because <laughs> I know we're going to beat Bainville by way more touchdowns than that. <laughs> no one put that in the edit. Paul Walker, shout out to Paul Walker for Varsity Blues. No, but I had a dream last night that uh, I, I, I went jet skiing uh, and I overpaid. That was my actual dream, was I got hustled at a jet ski uh, at the Ventura Pier. That was the real dream. But my dream that I really want to turn to food, it's a Doritos Locos Calzone. That's what we're doing today. We're making a cheddar and Dorito flavor infused calzone. And then we're gonna fill that with a filling that is inspired by both Taco Bell and the Cheesecake Factory. That is where this weird hypno wheel of a dream all comes into play. Also, did you know that Guy Fieri claims that he invented the concept of Cajun chicken fettuccine Alfredo. He's my problematic fave and I have to live with that. We've broken this recipe down into three incredibly easy to follow steps. We got those right there. We also got a full written recipe down in the description. We also have a podcast called A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. The latest episode just dropped yesterday. Go click the link in the description to get that wherever uh, you get your podcasts. Well, let's get cooking. Right, let's talk about a little bit of calzone theory here. So calzone, a lot of people have said, Josh, a pizza is an open-faced sandwich. That is an absolute lie. Nicole, is that an absolute lie? Absolutely. Absolute lie. A calzone, on the other hand, is also not a sandwich, nor is a dumpling. A calzone is a large hand pie in the same family and phylum as empanade. So we're making like a giant uh, uh, empanada style pizza calzone. You've had a calzone before. So we're taking some flour. Holy crap, I wasn't even supposed to do that. I don't know why I did that. I looked at all the stuff and I tried to piece it together like when a toddler sees like the pegs in the hole and they're like, eh, square should probably go in that round hole. And you're like, you're an idiot toddler. Anyways, we're gonna take this flour and put that in there. You wanna decant your flour into a large bowl, that way you can spill it a little bit. Uh, we're making pizza dough, but we're making Dorito flavor infused pizza dough here. So we got the chili powder, we got the paprika, we got the onion powder, we got the garlic powder, we got a little bit of sugar that I'm gonna add to some yeast, blooming in warm water, and a little bit of olive oil, and then we got this stuff. We got cheddar cheese powder, which I cannot recommend enough. Everyone should get cheddar cheese powder to keep in your pantry. Did someone gesture at me? Sorry, I'm easily distracted. I'm like a, a, a bird of prey that sees something like in the distance, and then immediately is just like, should I kill that? Nicole, just stop moving. I right, so we're gonna add our cheese powder to the flour. We can pull this up and just kind of mix it together. As we found out in the Myth Munchers episode, uh, stand mixture is the best way to make pizza dough. You let it knead for like six, eight minutes. So the theory here is we're gonna try and make a Dorito flavor infused pizza dough, but then we're also going to brush that down with egg wash and then put actual crushed Doritos on it. Because the big problem with calzones, not enough flavor in the crust. You know, the calzone problem, the locale calzone problem. Locale calzone zone? I was an office guy, not a big Parks and Recs guy. It's fine. What do you think this powder is that I forgot to put in there? <laughs> I breathe in onion powder. That's a good way to find out, it's onion powder. All right, so we have onion powder in there. We got all our spices in there. And then we have our yeast blooming in water with a little bit of sugar just to activate it in the oil. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna stream this in there. There we go, there we go. Let it go on high. Oh no, sorry. Maybe let it go on low. Okay, now it's coming together, now it's coming together. The last time I had a calzone, let me, let me tell you a little story. It was at Giovanni's restaurant, in UC Santa Barbara, and I took the six pound calzilla challenge. It is the only challenge to this day that I have failed from an eating perspective. If you think about the architecture of a calzone, when you make a calzone that is six pounds, I have eaten a six pound burrito in less than 10 minutes from El Tepeyac in East Los Angeles. Six pounds of food is nothing for me. But with a calzone, the problem is the outside gets burnt so it looks like it's cooked, but then you got this giant roll of braided dough that is completely uncooked. So there I was, 18 year old, 260 pound freshman at UC Santa Barbara, eating a six pound calzone. I had 20 minutes left on the clock and all I had left was crust. And so I take that crust and I start chewing, then I find out that it is completely raw and my jaw starts locking up, trying to chew through this crust as if it were chewing gum. And I think, oh, maybe I can wet the crust. Maybe I can wet the crust in some water. So I dip it in my water and I eat it. Turns out the water makes the crust seize up. So I'm sitting there with locked jaw, watching the time tick down on the clock. Everyone around me was standing there cheering. The beer was flowing. The owner of Giovanni's, Giovanni himself, came out to see me. I would have been the first person to ever beat the Calzilla challenge, but I couldn't because of improperly cooked calzone dough. Giovanni, you sandbagged me on that one. I should have gotten the t-shirt. I should have gotten my picture up on the wall, but instead I got nothing. And I was so full afterwards that I made myself throw up in the bushes, but it happened to be outside a sorority house and it was the most popular sorority on campus. And then all the AP girls, they came out and they just saw me just thrown up in their bushes as they were going out to a nice date night. College, man. Shut this off. Get this guy going. Uh, I'm gonna take some olive oil. I'm gonna grease up a little bowl. I'm gonna kind of 
there's no point in balling it up, but I feel weird if I don't ball it up. Okay, I'm gonna ball the dough up and I'm gonna put that, rub it around in the grease a little bit. I'm gonna get a little bit more olive oil on top and then I'm gonna take this wet mythical kitchen towel available now at mythical.com, the official Doritos Locos Calzone dough resting towel of the mythical kitchen brought to you by towels. And then we're gonna let this rest for about four hours uh, just to give it a rise. I know we said pizza dough at best fermenting for 48 hours, but this is calzone dough. It's way different, it's pizza dough, but foldy. My knee crack, did you hear that? Everybody, come on, clap it up! We're making Drew Not Locos Calzones in here! Come on, you did this! You did this! Chris, I assume you do something, but from my perspective, you kind of stand there. Uh, <laughs> we're doing the cooking show? That's exciting, all right. We gotta make the filling for the Doritos Locos Calzone. We've made the Doritos Locos portion of it, and we've made the calzone portion of it. Now we have to make none of the other words, because that's it. The Cheesecake Factory, in my mind, invented the concept of Cajun chicken fettuccine Alfredo, one of the most delicious dishes known to man. That's kind of what we're doing, except instead of Cajun, well, we got a little bit of the Tony C's going on, but also uh, we have the Taco Bell fire sauce going in there. How about instead of me talking, I just like cook stuff. Would you like that? So we got some oil going in a pan here. We're also making a little bit of Alfredo sauce. So we're gonna take this butter, and I'm gonna kind of mash it out with a spoon a little bit. I don't like putting whole sticks of butter in a pan, because then the butter starts brown and the outside of the butter starts browning and then it doesn't work right. <laughs> a lot of people think that Alfredo sauce is not a traditional Italian dish. Like technically it was invented in Rome for a pregnant American tourist. Look up the story. Traditional Italian Alfredo, albeit incredibly rare, is literally an emulsification of pasta water with Parmesan and a lot of butter. The Americans tend to add heavy cream to it. And then once you get into like TikTok mom territory, you start throwing in bricks of cream cheese. That's also the Nicole method. Nicole, you're gonna be the best TikTok mom one day. Oh my God. And we're getting a couple cloves of minced garlic in there. We want to start getting the garlic expressed into the butter. We're getting some uh, black peppercorns in there. That's cool, it's gonna make it taste like uh, pepper. I also wanna start with bacon. There's another influence in my cooking. Some chefs say they're influenced by the greats, you know, the Marco Pierre Whites, the Jean-Georges von Gerichtens. I'm influenced by the Costco. Did you ever get a chicken bake? One of the modern marvels of the culinary world. Caesar salad dressing inside a little calzone. Bake it, keep it hot for nine hours, sell it for $3. It's got 1,100 calories in it. It is one of the most delicious things you'll ever eat. So I'm trying to do something a little bit similar to that. So we're getting our bacon rendering in there. We're gonna let that fat render out of that. Then we're gonna get our veg sauteing. We got that butter nice and melted. I'm gonna add all the heavy cream to that. <laughs> yeah, this is a real light recipe, you know? Like a little like clean eating. Someone invited me to be on a paleo podcast and I was like, I don't know if you've seen what I do. Paleo, get the heck out of here. I could have beat up a caveman. They were like this big. <laughs> All right. We don't want to heat it too much because we don't want that butter to separate. I'm going to take that Parmesan. I'm going to get that in there. It's going to get nice and thick. Now we got to toss in our mushrooms there. We're tossing in some onions into that. <laughs> Sorry. And then we're going to saute this around. So we're, uh, what? People on the Food Network, they don't do this. You know, why do I do this? There's no chicken here. All right, we're gonna get a little bit of fire sauce in there. This is gonna set up a little bit. We're gonna boil it down a little bit. Meanwhile, we got other stuff cooking. We got the mushrooms, we got the bacon, we got the onions in there, but now, what's this called, Nicole? Nicole, what, what is this ingredient? Chim, Chim Ken? Chim Ken, we're gonna go ahead and add our Chim Ken. Never heard of it, into the pan. We're gonna hit it with a little bit of Tony Sacheries in there. There we go. Then we're just gonna saute this around. There we go, and then later we're gonna hit it into the sauce. You wanna keep your heat super high on this pan to get a nice good sear on that cheese. Is this going into one calzone? Golly, this is a lot. Well, I'm excited. Sauce is good, we're pulling the sauce, we're pulling the sauce. That looks great. We're gonna toss both these and we're gonna get a whole lot of mozzarella cheese in there. That's how Giada De Laurence says it, she says mozzarella. We're gonna get a whole lot of mozzarella cheese inside of Doritos Locos. Oh, I turned, I turned the heat off a while ago. <laughs> That's why I wasn't cooking. Uh, long day. <laughs> Just kidding, it's oil, you morons. Welcome back to the cooking show. Uh, I gotta think of butter smelling Crisco. It's not quite flavored like butter, but it smells like butter. I'm gonna lube up my hands. We got this Dorito calzone dough, not even close to a pizza dough. Wow, so for stop yelling at me for once in your life, dad, I don't wanna go to technical school. Um, so we're gonna take this Dorito dough and we're just gonna press it out a little bit. Let me get a little more in here. You don't have to make a big show of tossing it, you know? That's the, uh, that's some fancy pants, hot shot, show off type stuff. And also I can't do it. <laughs> Every time I tried to toss pizza dough in here, I screw it up, I hit Chris's boom, I get it in the rafters, it's embarrassing. All right, so we're gonna press this out a little bit. Yeah, keep working that out. Right, I'm hill strike. There we go. All right, so this is pretty much pressed out. We don't wanna create a crust on this because we're gonna roll it over on itself and then, and they're perfect. Kind of hard to breathe. V, can you come punch me in the chest? Right here. Yeah. Nice! Um, you had 
an explosion. I had an accident. Wait, you want a Dorito? Uh oh, <laughs> they're coming out the bottom. So we're gonna get our Doritos in there. We're eventually gonna crust that in Doritos. <laughs> we got, there is wine. We have about three weeks. I'm still shaking it out of my apron. You can hear it. <laughs> it's in my jorts. The Doritos are in my jorts. Oh God, I'm covered in cheese and crumbs. This is how my dream ends. Let, let, we can finish it. The Doritos aren't that distracting. Guys, the outro to this definitely has to be me just sweeping. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take some cheese and we're gonna put it onto one side of it right there. We're gonna get cheese on both layers and we want this to be extra cheesy because it's Doritos. Doritos are extra cheesy. You're extra cheesy. Trevor's the cheesiest GD person I know. It's been an honor working with you. That sounds like you're getting fired. I don't know why I said that. I, I just meant like it, it has been an honor. It, it is currently an honor and will be long into the future. Assuming that's what your career goals are. I, you know, I don't, but if you know, if you like a letter of recommendation all is, Okay, I got you, got you, got you. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Keep me on track. All right, now we're gonna mound up a whole lot of this filling right here. It turned a little grayer than I want it to, and it looks a little bit like gruel. This looks like the Hormel ready-to-eat dinners that you feed babies. You're not supposed to feed babies those. Don't feed a baby the uh, Hormel ready-to-eat dinner. That's uh, probably a hazard, and, and, and that teaches me that I shouldn't give parenting advice. If anyone's watching the show for parenting advice, God, I'm sorry. All right, so we got a lot of that cheese mounted up. Now I'm gonna take the dough and very carefully do that. Let's stretch it over and I'm just gonna sort of crimp the edges down. This is a fat boy. There's enough oil in the dough that when we bake it off like this, it should kind of just loose itself through all of the weeping Dorito fat. Yeah, keep crimping with your pinkies. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna score the calzone four times. The reason you score calzone is because you want air pockets for steam to escape, otherwise it's gonna bubble up and it could burst and we don't want this beautiful slap in the face to God of a creation to burst. There we go. So. I got the calzone scored. This is gonna go in the oven for 10 minutes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend up these here Doritos. Then after 10 minutes in the oven, this is gonna be almost fully cooked. We're gonna brush it down with egg wash, get Doritos on there, pop it back in just to finish it. Really tighten that up. Wow, man, this is awesome. Excuse me. Whew. Sorry about the Doritos, everyone. I don't know what happened. Well, I know what happened. I told V to punch me in the chest when I had Doritos there. That's probably what did it. I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, that green one. What's this one called? Rosemary. We're gonna take some thyme and drop that in there. We're just getting an urban Dorito crust, of course. And a little bit of, a little bit of, why is the holes? If your oregano is that size, it's bad oregano. What are they, they've set themselves up for failure. What do you get a little oregano essence with the little holes? Come on, form follows function, read a book. All right, now we're just gonna crush up these Doritos. And you know, I'm just gonna go instinct. Nope, <laughs> swing and a miss. <laughs> swing and, wait, did I have it right though? No. no, I feel like I've never seen this before. <laughs> I think this goes this way, not that way. That goes that way, it's locked into place, so it should work, look at that! Oh God, it was already on. That's how you do it, you gotta knock it loose a little bit, you stop it, and instead of like, you know, oh, take a silicone spatula tonight. There we go, there's our urban Dorito crust. All right, so you're gonna take your falconer's glove and Maverick, come and meet! <laughs> there it is. Thanks, Trevor. All right, we're gonna pull the cows out of the oven and egg wash it. Didn't expect a falconer's bit, did you? Oh, this is just leaking grease. <laughs> Ow, this does not prevent against heat. Why do we have this in the drawer? Well, I'm still using it to put it back in. So we're gonna egg wash this. You gotta egg wash it quick, because this is gonna turn to scrambled eggs almost immediately, so what are you gonna do is... Well, we found out if you put Doritos on in the beginning, they burn in there. Uh, you could just eat this. This looks nice as it is, but I really want to get fresh Doritos on it. So again, you're going to have to egg wash and then put Doritos on immediately. Yep, this is what we're doing now. I think the Doritos should help soak up the grease. That's how you know we don't cook the stuff that most people do when you're using phrases like the Doritos should soak up the grease. And a little bit more. Yeah, hold well, on, I'm going to brush the backside. This is technically called the taint of the calzone. Kind of... They call that this Milanese style in Italy. All right, and now we're gonna take this glove that again does not work. I think it actually amplifies the heat coming from this pan and I'm gonna pop it back in the oven. Ow, 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 ow. Woo! All right, another five minutes and then uh, we, we can eat this here Dorito Calzone. <laughs> Look at this big old son of a biscuit. Look at her twirl. All right, I'm gonna cut into it. This is just gonna explode with grease and cheese and I'm pretty excited about it. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. That, you mother clucker. This is something. Should I, can I eat it? Can I lick it? 
What we've essentially done is made a Dorito Costco chicken bake. That's exactly what the inside of a Costco chicken bake is. I know because sometimes I bite off the end like a cigar and I go and I spit out the crust and then I just slurp down the insides of it. It's a little carb that way. When I'm eating calzones or when I'm eating pizza, I go into the marina first and then I go directly into the ranch. Mmm. Come on, man. That's so good. Uh, this is incredible. It's like incredibly soul satisfying in such a deep way. I think especially because of the amount of labor and work that we put into it. But I mean, it's unbelievably tasty. You get that little bit of spice. I'm throwing Doritos with my gestures. You get that little bit of spice in the fire sauce. You get all the crunch from the Doritos. Oh, my God, this is good. But hey, you know, they get food. It's not food unless you chat with your friend. V, come get this spork. God, that's good. Oh, I'm gonna take a sip of ranch, but I shouldn't. V, you want ranch? Okay. So, I'm gonna take a sport glove and um, let me, God, I'm sorry. V, I am wielding the glove of power. Are you ready for your sporkening? I'm so ready. All right, come here, Wait, here, let me. You know you cannot pick that up with all those Wanna bet? sporks on your head. Hold hip. on. Oh, you cheated. No, I didn't cheat, I, it's the spork. Here, look, now it's you all sporks. V, try it. Wait, do you want to dip in the sauce? Yeah, yeah, just that one, because I saw you slurp that earlier yeah, and it's no, not no, sanitized. Here, here, no, it's folding over on itself. You got it, you got okay, it. Okay. You gotta get into it. V, you got, a, you got a little problem with lactose, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Have fun with that one. Wow. I'm a huge fan of chicken and cheese, everything. Mm -hmm. So, oh, wow. <laughs> I know, it's so <laughs> chewy from all the mozzarella. It's so good though. You can taste all the spices. The Dorito is the first thing I taste, so that's probably my favorite part because I'm actually a Dorito fan. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's amazing and I love it. And it doesn't need ranch. Don't let Josh fool you. Uh, it doesn't need ranch, yeah, you're gonna want some ranch on it. No, I don't want it. V, thank you so much for being our sporky today. And thank you so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes for you every week. We got new episodes of our podcast, Hot Dog and Sandwich, every Wednesday, wherever you got your podcast. Hit us up on Instagram, at Mythical Kitchen, under hashtag dreams become food, pictures of your mythical dishes, just like Sydney did. Sydney and her husband started cooking during quarantine, and they started watching a lot of Mythical Kitchen videos, and then she bought her husband and his best friend of 10 years and college roommate matching Mythical Kitchen aprons, and they made these really awesome looking uh, Oreo biscuits and gravy that we did like way back in the day. It looks really incredible. Sydney, thank you so much for the support uh, and buying the aprons, and the boys, you look so good in them. Truly, thank you so much. Keep submitting. Ew. Okay, that was disturbing. I'm gonna put that down. <laughs> no, that was mine. What? Now I really can't touch either of them. <sighs> so rude. I'm having a great time. Oh my mess. God, guys, Josh is cleaning. It's a great day. I help out. This is like when the mayor does the photo shoot of like picking up a single can at the LA River and they're like, Mayor Garcetti cares about LA. They're like, your ass threw that back in the river. You know you did. Speaking of which. You can cook up your own feast while wearing the Mythical Kitchen Apron, available now at mythical.com.